Hello, YouTubers. This is a quick video of my changing my power converter in my trailer. Um, it's a, originally a Elixir converter, and I swapped it for a WFCO 8735 converter. The, um, they're pretty much the same. Uh, they both have both have uh, 12 volt power uh, for the regular trailer lights. They have circuit breakers um, for the uh, 120 volt house power. And they plug into Shoreline. They have a battery charger. The WIFCO WFCO um, seems to have a three stage battery charger that works much better. So I wanted to uh, change over to that and see how that works. The first thing you have to do is uh, pull off the the top of the little storage area where it uh, mine is mounted. Inside, you can see all the wires and stuff. The yellow wires are the house 120 wires. That's kind of like regular Romax that you put in a house. And it's uh, three wire conductors. And then you can see the the house or the shore power line coming in through the wall of the trailer in the back there. These um, all have to be unhooked and disconnected so that you can get the, uh, the old one out. The um, red tubing you see in the middle of the picture is uh, the hot and cold water lines or blue underneath them. But on the top of the uh, converter is an access plate. You remove that plate and you'll see the wires coming in from outside and you have your green or copper wires which are your grounds and you have your white neutral wires which they both go to uh, blocks of aluminum that just screw in. The black power wires actually go down to the circuit breakers so you can't get to those but you have to unscrew all those neutrals and ground wires and then you can go down to the circuit breakers and start at them. The circuit breakers are on the front you take the uh, cover, there's a cover over the circuit breakers off, there's two screws on the outer cover, and then there's another screw in the middle there for the inner locking cover for the main breaker. Once you get the, those covers off, you'll see the wires, and this particular one has a wire with a wire nut on it because it was an extra wire coming from a branch wire, they call it. But the circuit breakers just tilt forward from the top and they will unconnect and then they lift out. So if you can grab those with needle nose pliers or if you can get them with your fingers, pull them forward and they will unconnect and lift out of, the, of their parking spot where they reside. Um, you can see in the picture here there's little tabs in the back where they kind of plug in to this aluminum rod back there. So you can take both of those out and you'll see the, the brown black power wires coming down. If you look closely you'll notice one wire is a little thicker than the others and that's your 30 amp wire coming in from your shore power. It's the the feeder line that feeds all the breakers and that, that goes in comes out from the 30 amp power cord and here's a better picture. You can kind of really see the difference in the wires um, size side by side. You can also see here the two little screws, the little orange or silver screws that hold those wires in. All you do is loosen those screws and the wires pull right out. And when you're ready to change over to the other one, you just push the wires in and tighten the screws and then make sure they don't pull out easily. So it's a pretty simple thing to change circuit breakers. Now this is a trailer, this isn't a house, so don't think that this all transfers over to house wiring. But um, this is pretty simple to do. One thing that was new to me when I was doing this is that I noticed all these breakers have square head screws in them. You can use a flat head screwdriver, but it doesn't work as well as a good square drive screwdriver. And you might have to buy a square drive screwdriver. Um, but um, it works much better and you get much more positive uh, tightening and loosening. And you won't strip those little screws. You strip those screws, you'll have to buy a 
new breaker. So um, get a square drive screwdriver to do on these. And they're a medium size. They're the middle size, not the smallest, not the largest. And once you get um, the breakers free from the wiring, then the, the black wires will all be hanging there. And you can go up on top and start actually removing your cables, your house wire cables and your shore power cable from the back of the converter. And um, here's a picture showing the one of the house wire cables pulling through. You pull the white, the black, and the copper ground cables out through the back. On my converter, uh, the house power cables weren't really um, connected to the converter. They weren't anchored um, very well. The, the shore power cable you can see has a great big anchor connector to it that um, puts it through the hole. But uh, the house power, they just pulled right through. You can see here the um, the house power is all out. The yellow, the yellow cables are the house power. They're all pulled out and just the shore power cable is still there and that's um, it's held there by a retainer that's kind of big and bulky and it's pretty nice actually. I slid a screwdriver between the converter wall and the contain the clip and it unclipped and um, I was able to pull it out and reuse that so that was a, a good part. So with every all the wiring out of the converter box now you can swing around to the front again and take the screws out that hold the converter into the wall and um, there were four on mine and you just slide it out. Uh, you got the hole where the breakers were and you got you still got your 12 volt fuses in there but you'll pull those later and use those on the other one once you get this totally out. So here it is laying on the floor and you see the 12 volt wires now are your next task to change over and they're not any worse but there's a lot more of them so they can be in intimidating. Also on the back is a ground wire for the entire trailer in case there's a short circuit somewhere in your 120 or something like that. It'll blow the breakers and um, you won't get electrocuted. Although there are other ways to do that. Get electrocuted that is. Um, this is my 12 volt mess. It's uh, all the wires come together and they zip tied them nice. Actually it was a pretty nice mess actually from what I've seen in other trailers so I wasn't too concerned with that. They were all there and together and they were all about the same length which is a big help. There is always that chance your trailer will have short wires and you might have a problem even getting the inverter out of the wall without pulling on wires and that would be kind of dangerous because you may lose some but that's okay that's um, I did actually pull the propane detector wire apart so that but it was right there and I figured that out pretty quick so the task here is to um, on this you can see the wire zip tie that uh, holds the wires together. You just cut that and kind of separate the wires out. I placed the new converter next to the old converter and um, the 12 volt wires uh, hanging out there. And I just took one 12 volt wire from one converter, um, from the old converter, pulled the wire out and matched it up with uh, the new converter. So I grabbed the red wire from the coming out of the old converter unscrewed the wire nut from the wire coming out of the trailer and hooked that up to the red wire to the new converter. And then I did the brown wire from the old converter, pulled that out of the wall there and unscrewed the wire and uh, hooked that up to the new converter. And pretty soon I had um, all the old wires connected to the new converter and I was done except I had wires left over on the new converter which is what I expected because it's got more capacity and it's got more possibilities. The next part is to bring the shoreline power and the house power into the box and so you have to knock out these two holes in the back. Um, 
were no knockouts when I first got it, so you just have to knock them out. You shouldn't have to drill or anything. You just hit them with a screwdriver once or twice, and they pop right out. So there's your two holes. The bigger hole is for the shoreline, and the smaller hole is for the house power lines that go into the circuit breakers. Then you flip the box over, and um, this is uh, the first time I took the cover off, but this... Uh, this is a cover that covers up where the circuit breakers go and your internal wiring. So you take the four screws out of the corners of that and that comes off. And then that can be placed in the wall. The whole thing can be placed in the hole in the wall. Now I, I had to increase the size of the hole about an inch down. Um, I just took a, another inch off the bottom with a utility knife. It wasn't hard to just score the the bottom with the utility knife and then break it open, break it over, and it was fine. I took a little sandpaper to it, um, actually an electric sander to it, but it fit in the wall very well. And then you have four screws to anchor it to the wall, same as the old one, and I just self-tapped them in there, so that wasn't any big deal. You can see the fuses are missing in this picture because it doesn't come with any fuses. You can take the fuses out of the old converter, or you can go buy some new ones. The fuses are fuses, though. They don't they don't get old or stale or anything, so use the old ones. You might need more. As I said, there's more uh, wires on this one than the old one. The nice thing about the converter is that it comes with its internal wiring wired up so how you do all the other wiring. So you see the white wire and the green wire are the converter boxes wires. And so you just match that up with your wires from your shore power. So feed your shore power cable in through the back and um, anchor it to the converter box. As I said, I use the um, anchor and cable protector from the old one. The copper wire there is the um, chassis ground from the trailer. And there's actually a little hole right next to the the shore power that you feed that in and attach that to the internal grounding bar and that grounds the trailer to the converter box and the outside power and all that. There is a wiring diagram inside the uh, lid of the WIFCO 8735. However, I think it's more confusing than help. Um, the one thing it does kind of show you that you, where your converter power is connected, so where your neutral bars are and your um, ground bars are, but um, I didn't really use it because I thought it was more confusing than it was worth it, and maybe that's just me. Just in case you're an absolute novice and um, you haven't ever seen this before, I took a good picture of what the inside breaker connections are. These are the little pins the breakers um, plug into or they plug into the breaker. And as you can see, again, the green ground wire from the converter, the white neutral wire from the converter, and these are the things that power the battery and the charger and the 12-volt um, converter stuff. So that little silver tab on the top holds the main breaker in. So you feed your shore power in through the back, and you can feed your house wires in from the back, and suddenly you have this bird's nest of wiring. Um, and you have to put the, the green wires where the green wires or copper, plain copper wire, no covering on it is ground wire. And the white wires are the neutral wires and they go on the bottom there. And um, the black wires hang loose waiting for the, the breakers to be installed. So that's uh, this is kind of like just unscrew and rescrew and, and tighten them down and make sure they're in there tight. You don't need too much extra wire um, exposed, so keep the insulation in good tow. Um, it will become a bird's nest in there, and don't. One of the things I noticed is I buried the converter black wire way behind everything, and I had to dig it back out. So um, keep the converter black wire out in front because it's got to hook up to a breaker so that it gets power, so that it's you're powering your battery charger and house power. Once you get all the grounds and neutrals um, well connected, you can connect the largest 
black wire which should be coming from your shore power to the highest amperage breaker which is 30 amp on this particular one it may be a 50 if you're doing a 50 amp thing but that's your incoming power from your shoreline so get your that goes into the bottom and tightens down just like the way you took them out you just loosen the, the screw quite a bit and push it in there and tighten it down so it's making good contact with the conductor part of the wire and then you can hook up the other breaker the same way with the other black wires um, make sure you hook up your converter power black wire to something to, to one of the breakers and these are all 20 amps uh, most everything is 20 amps I think and most uh, most trailers and except the really big motor homes maybe um, 30 amps if they're running 50 big refrigerator or washer dryer or something like that and once you get um, all the wires hooked in you can gently um, put the bottoms in and lay them back up in so they plug into the bar now you've got that bird's nest below that's going to be a real problem you got to kind of push the wires out of the way and bend them over don't worry about it you won't hurt them if they come loose from their screw anchors then you probably didn't have them in there very good to begin with and it's lucky you found out now versus in six months when sometimes they catch fire if you don't have them well anchored and, and connected they they can get over hot sparking and causing troubles and then they can catch fire so make sure all your wires are tight once you get everything in there and everything check every wire give it a little tug and uh, make sure the screws are tightened go through them again with the screwdriver and you should be in good shape I mean you're nearly done when you think about it and um, now again this is the main breaker the is the 30 amp and on my thing because I reused the breakers from the other converter it's actually the second breaker is the 30 amp but it's my trailer and I'll know what it is so um, it is the the main breaker so that feeds the other three breakers in this setup the other three are all 20s and um, they the house power comes in and goes into those other breakers and the converter goes into the other breaker so everybody's got their own breaker and and so for my trailer the um, house power on one side of the trailer is on one circuit breaker and the house power on the other side of the trailer is on the other circuit breaker and then the last circuit breaker goes to the converter itself which you never know the converter could catch fire ground out or short so it's nice to have its own breaker and, and it probably doesn't really even need a 20 amp breaker I could have put a 15 amp breaker in there but um, it has 20 amp breaker in there so then you put the little tab on the main breaker so it uh, is locked in there as in the instructions and then as you can see in this picture I put all the the um, 12 volt fuses and their sockets and I actually had two sockets that were left over and um, because none of the wiring is is labeled as to what it is I actually went and, and tested each circuit independently one-on-one -on -one, to make sure it was working um, at this stage um, if you're if you've got everything cleaned up you didn't have anything laying around you can go and plug in your shore power and test to see if you've got um, electricity in the converter um, hopefully everything's good and down and you, you, you're all right Plug in your shore power, uh, throw your main breaker, uh, your 30 amp breaker, to on and um, check if anything's on and then throw your other 20 amp breakers on and see if the the microwave or the fridge or whatever you've got on there. Um, I use a little night light to uh, test the, the outlets to see if they're working. It's not a bad idea to use a cheap um, $3 circuit tester that just plugs into the outlets and tells you whether the grounds are good and the neutrals right and all that that's a, a good technique I, I did that after I did the video but um, you should have your lights and everything if your fuses are in the proper fuse things and that you know you should be working so put your cover back on and um, set up uh, 
If you want to label your circuit breakers so you know what they are, left and right, or uh, front and back, or however the wiring goes, um, you can do that. It's not a bad idea to uh, label your fuses, your 12 volt fuses, because they're a little harder to tell when they blow than the um, 110 or 120 volt. What you do is um, you're running on shore power, so you've got your shore power working. Um, you can pull a fuse and see if something goes out. I mean, if you've got everything running, you should have, I would have everything in the place running and see if the fan works on the converter. Um, have your refrigerator, fantastic fan, your lights, your um, microwave, everything you've got that could possibly um, normally run and make sure everything's doing great and uh, that you don't have any smoke or anything <laughs> coming out of the converter, which you shouldn't have. But then um, the things that are 12 volt, um, like your furnace, um, your lights, you know, pull a, pull a fuse and see what turns off and then make a note on paper that this is where, um, you know, your this fuse does this and then pull another one this fuse does this and see until everything goes off. You might have extra fuses that don't do anything and then you can keep those on the on the converter. In case you do blow one, you'll have an extra one just waiting there. I often tape a, tape a fuse or two to the inside of the converter cover. This thing that closes over it, just so if uh, one blows, you'll have a spare fuse. It's a good place to keep it because when you're looking at blown fuses, you aren't going to remember where you stored the the new fuses <laughs> but um, and then you'll always have the right fuses because you'll know they'll match also when you're all done with this um, unplug from shore power and go out and hook up your battery hopefully you haven't had your battery hooked up until now but hook up your battery and check all your 12 volt systems again make sure everything's working um, and um, so go through the whole test with 12 volts on just your battery um, you probably don't want to have everything turned on when you hook up your battery. You get a pretty good spark coming off that. But um, And then um, when you're convinced that everything on your 12 volts working, go to your shore line, your shore power, and plug into shore power and make sure your battery is charging. Now my battery, I put a uh, volt meter on the top of it, you can see here, that has... Um, uh, it's a digital readout voltmeter, and anytime I plug into shore power, I can see the battery instantly jumps up to 12.9 uh, or 13.8 volts. Sometimes with the um, with the new Wefco, it goes all the way up to 14, which I'm pretty impressed with that because that'll that'll charge the battery pretty fast. But um, do all your stuff to check everything out so that you know everything works with the battery with the shore power with both um, and then make sure that nothing's getting hot or smoking or anything like that because um, that's the the most important part is the final inspection and you should be okay I think we did everything right well thanks for watching my video I hope uh, I hope you subscribe and, and check out some of my other videos I'll be posting this is actually my first video and it's a little shaky I think but uh, I'm not going to redo the whole thing. It uh, took me more than four hours to do 30 minutes of video. So in case you're ever interested in doing something like this, that's to tell you how it is. <laughs> it's a lot of work. So people who do YouTube videos, I have a lot more respect for them now than I used to. But um, have a great time camping, and I hope to see you on the road someday maybe. Just uh, keep an eye out for the doghouse with the two dogs and me. Have a great time camping. Bye-bye.